You're listening to Art Affairs, episode 84. Today I'll be talking to Adam Cruz Best. So my name is Michael Faith, and this is Art Affairs. Art Affairs is my attempt at shining a spotlight on the many wonderful people that make up this amazing art community, featuring conversations with artists, gallerists, curators, telling their stories. You can take through previous episodes, complete with show notes, at artaffairspodcast.com. But the best way to stay plugged in is to subscribe on your favorite podcast platform. And if you're really enjoying the show and want to help support what I'm doing here in an even bigger way, Check out the Art Affairs Patreon. Not only does it give you an opportunity to help keep the show going, but there are several community-oriented benefits as well, like getting early access to episodes and suggesting questions for upcoming guests. You can find all the information about that at patreon.com slash artaffairs. You can also connect with the show on Instagram at artaffairspodcast. All right, so today's guest is Artist Best. Mateusz Gapski, also known as Best, is one half of the street art duo Adam Crew, Based out of Poland, Adam Crew was originally the neighborhood crew that Matt had formed in his hometown of Turek. In recent years, he's shifted to focus on his personal work with the occasional Adam collab here and there. We talk about all this and so much more. So I hope you enjoy my conversation with Mateusz Gapski. Matthews, welcome to the show, man. It's so good to have you on. I'm so, I mean, we've talked about this for a little while, and I'm glad we could finally make this happen. Yeah, thank you. I'm gl- glad to be here. Yes, finally. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so let's dive into your, your background a little bit. I, I did a little bit of reading up on, on, you know, where you came from, and I know you were born and grew up in Turek, Poland, which, you know, I looked at Google Maps as, as, as much as, as I knew about it, but it seemed to be like a beautiful town, like a small town right in the middle of, you know, the country of Poland. Um, what was that area like when you were growing up? Um, I would not call it beautiful. <laughs> okay, <laughs> it's a small town, like in the middle of nowhere. Um, there is no infrastructure here, and there are no trains right now. There are no buses even here, so oh, it's wow. you can feel that that's uh, it's kind of abandoned. I mean, not abandoned because we have like thirty thousand people living here, and we all like we yeah, we have normal lives. But um, when you don't have a car here, you can't really travel nowhere. You have to stay here. So, and I grew up here and, um, it's been like that, uh, from, from my birth, we had a bus station, uh, from years, uh, for years, but now it's, uh, it's, it's not, it's not there anymore. So growing up here, because it's Poland and it's, um, a little bit still communism here when I was a young kid, even if we don't even have the communist, communist finished but you still could feel the vibe of it till like I was like 14, 15 or something like that. Um, it was, um, hmm, it was an experience, I would say. Um, it wasn't really easy. We didn't have almost nothing here. There was a lot of, there was a lot of aggression around a lot of, um, let me start in the beginning. So, most of the people living here in the city worked in a um, mining um, companies. There was a, a mine close, so all the uh, almost all the people worked there or worked in a, a close to the, the, the industry. Then, so and my father was an ex police uh, cop. Okay. So it's yeah, it, it we had a little bit different background, but we used to live. Um, here and I, I live in the same spot actually. I live in the same right now really? in the same flat that I was I was living when I was a kid. Wow! And yeah, I I bought it from my from my parents and I <laughs> live here. I I I'm, I try to build a house close by, so I so I live here for now. But yeah, nice. So it changed in the years, but in the beginning when I was a kid, it was it was it was hard here. Like, and it was times before the internet. So basically, you were closed in a small group of people and you hang out with them your entire childhood and right now like some of my right now friends are the friends from my childhood so 
that's a really? cool thing. They still s- stayed in touch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's yeah. Some of them stayed here. Some of them, you know, mm-hmm. traveled a little bit, but we stay in touch. But yeah, right now I have a two close friends from my childhood. They are like here, here. Nice. That's amazing. And um, you know, because I, I don't feel that I I see a lot of people like moving away from their homes and just leaving it forever, right? But it, see, it's interesting that that plus the fact that you recognize that it was difficult, like it was a difficult environment growing up. Um, yet you stayed. So like, that, it just, I, was that just because you really wanted to stay close to your family and like your roots? Um, so I traveled a little bit and, um, I live, I used to live in Warsaw for a few years. I used to live in uh, watch when I was studying for five years. Um, I were, I lived for a really short period, period of time in Portugal. So I did um, live in the different areas and I tra- sorry, I traveled a lot uh, when I was painting. So um, coming back here was um, a cool spot to kind of um, take the stress away, I would say. This is just come back. You don't have nothing here. So it's like you don't, I, I'm not a party guy. I don't like go to pubs. I don't go to restaurants a lot. I like to stay in the house. So it was kind of safe environment after all this crazy things going on around like with traveling and with yeah. all that stuff around so uh so and then i moved back because uh, with my ex-wife we decided to build a house here in the forest mm. and we found a uh, really nice land close by and um we i was looking close to warsaw close to poznan close to big cities and but this one was like the perfect one for me so the decision was made and yeah and right now i'm trying to you know build a house there and, and move there so so i'm in the Sounds end i'm going to be living in the forest so even <laughs> more close <laughs> from everyone outside <laughs> yeah. yeah i mean it's it sounds like the dream of an introvert i'm an introvert too like so like i i feel like yeah. that's that's very yeah. attractive just to get away from all of the the craziness of the city exactly you know? exactly i like to, i like to be by myself i mean i i like to talk with people still and, and yeah. you know and make those connections but i i feel comfortable staying by myself and you know working or like playing video games or stuff i always go back to something and i believe it was jaw cooper that said when i was talking with her um she phrased it so well she was she said something of, of the effect of I don't suffer from the absence of people. I really love being with people mm-hmm, when yeah. I'm with them, but I don't suffer from the absence of people. And I, I, that really resonated with me. Too. Yes, yeah, exactly. So you mentioned your parents or you mentioned your dad worked as, uh, as a former police officer. Um, what about your mom? Did she do anything creative or did you have any like artists in your family? Um, not really. Not, not by uh, work. My mother um, sells shoes. Okay. And my father was an ex-police cop and now he... Um, uh, now he's retired, but he used to work in, um, uh, not fabric, but, um, a warehouse, like a, yeah, a big warehouse. So there was no, like a lot of artistic background. My father used to, and still plays guitar and used to write poems. So he has like this artistic way of thinking and, and, um, living kind of, I would say. Um, but no, no, I'm. I didn't like art at all when I was a kid. I, that was something that I would never like see myself doing in, in, in the future. Without graffiti, I wouldn't be not painting it for sure. Right. So did you have ideas of being something else? Um, not really, because I started with graffiti when I was 13. I used to break dance. And before that, I didn't have no, like, we play football, like we did all those things that every kid does, like play football, like, you know, play outside with your friends. And like, we we got our own games, we had to be creative because we didn't have nothing. So we had to, you know, figure out our own games. But no, there was no uh, background, there was no idea of art. And yeah, I was, I just, when I was 13, my brother um, brought some graffiti, some sketches from his friend. And from that point, I was just like hooked in and... and that, nice. you know, that that started. Yeah. So it was hip hop culture that ultimately, like break dancing and just yeah, the, yeah, the world yeah. around hip hop yeah. that kind of dragged you in. Exactly, exactly. And the funny thing is that, like I said, we are disconnected from the world. So we didn't have no magazines. We had like somebody was bringing some tapes with hip hop with the first, um, like Molesta or like you know the big names in that time. But we didn't know what's that and. I saw some um, some tags and and some graffiti 
outside and I didn't know what what is that you know and and then my like I said my brother had a friend that um he was listening to hip hop like because my brother is 4 years uh, older than me so he was first introduced to hip hop and he kind of introduced it to me and he was uh, organizing those tapes and and you know those, those music that I was listening to and yeah but it was a big big influence and I still I still listen to hip hop I still it's still a big influence on me and I think all those like rules your like guidebook was was there in that time because now hip hop is totally different but in that time the polish hip hop was like kind of okay you have nothing but you can like work yourself up and like do your and it was really a different way of thinking that i really liked in those songs and yeah that's amazing so how did you go from breakdancing and hip hop to actually painting in the streets how did you make that jump to where you had the courage um, to to do graffiti <laughs> um so <laughs> So I was breakdancing like the same with with my brother and like the friend that we started to paint together later on. So when my brother showed me those sketches, I immediately started to sketch by myself and I was sketching for like 6 months or something like that without going outside. And then um my friend from my building block um he organized some money to be able to buy some spray cans and he we were like oh. okay, let's Let's go and try out. So we bought like two spray cans and we went and just painted um, our first graffiti. And we did. And the funny thing is that it lasted for 24 hours because it was painted over the next day <laughs> by somebody else, not from the building owners, but somebody else just painted it. So we did it in the night. We came back the next day and it was already gone. So I didn't even <laughs> saw <laughs> the end effect. But yeah, and and that that how it started, and then we started to paint together. We I was thirteen, so I was I didn't have no no money. My parents didn't have no no you know no money, so I had to um, go and work um, in different places to be able to get some money to be able to buy some spray cans or you know steal them a little bit from spots. And, you know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So back, so back then, when you were first starting out, was your tag name already best, or did you tag under a different name? No, the first one was Matt because it's Mateusz, so okay. I, I sure. was writing Matt, and then it was a few different ones, um, and then in the end, the first best came from uh, um, a crew that we had with our friend. It was called BS, and people mm-hmm. started to call me like BS best best, and it kind of I don't know why, but kind of turned into the, the this best and i hate this name because it's what it's, <laughs> it's creative and i was 13 i'm 36 now and it feels still like a kid's name you know and like <laughs> not really a proper artistic um, name but yeah but it stayed and and at first was best like best like with s not with z um but it didn't work for me as a letter in my in my graffiti so i changed it to z and okay. kind of, you know, it still sounds in Polish. It sounds totally the same, you know. It's best or best. It's like totally the same. So it was just like a fun with a letter, and yeah, and and then we with we and it's from thirteen to like fifteen, sixteen. I think we we did only illegal graffiti. I didn't paint no legal walls. I was just doing my stuff, and I was in um, different crew called uh, AFOS in that time. And we were like 10 guys. And I was like 14. That was the youngest, I think. Well, that my friend was the youngest. We were like 14, 15, something like that. Did your parents know like about all of this? How, like, How did they feel about um, what you were doing? Yeah. So, <laughs> so there was only one rule that my father gave to me. Don't get caught. Yeah, because he was, was a cop, right? That he, so. that, yeah, yeah, that was the only thing that he told me. Uh, they accepted okay. like straight. I was like, I don't, I don't think they did realize what's happening we were just going outside and i was coming back with like my hands full of paint and and my <laughs> my i was and my father was just asking me what i'm doing i was just graffiti and they didn't know what's what what is graffiti uh, they didn't okay. have no idea so i don't think they knew what is happening and then yeah and my just father told me don't get caught and that's it and and i didn't have no problems with my parents at all like i was a, a, my parents raised me um I think in a good way because they let me discover all by myself. I, I I used to talk with my dad a lot when I was a kid, and um, I remember when I was like 
13 or 14, and I uh, learned about the word empirism. I don't know if it's empirism, it's in English or not. If it's um, learning something by doing something. And um, and I used to tell my dad all the time, like, I like to live in that way. I like to you know, see my, my, what can I do and where can I go? And, and the graffiti um, thing gave me a lot of, um, I would say, courage to go outside because normally you you stay like when you like a standard person i would say um would stay in the same spot for the first like 14 years because when you would go outside from my um from my block you, you came to a different one and the people were hostile against you because you were from the different you know from, the, from a different neighborhood or like from different crew or something like that so you didn't want to go outside you know and the graffiti thing was you have to go outside because you have to go out to paint and you can't really paint only on your neighborhood you have to go out so with graffiti i was learning i was knowing new people i was seeing that the city is not so dangerous as i thought it is and and it was such a fun to be like 14 15 and go and paint it was <laughs> yeah i bet and so was that experience just getting your comfort with going out into the world and exploring your own creativity is that what uh, gave you the idea to ultimately follow your path as an artist because you went you went to the academy of fine arts in loads later originally before graffiti you you didn't think you were going to be an artist you never yeah. even really yeah pursued so that. so um i painted graffiti and then my dad um asked me if i want to go to art school so we have um you had before the academy you have the middle school that you can choose your own kind of direction that you want to go and there was an opportunity to go to an art school and um and i was like yeah i paint graffiti my dad was like, okay let's take your take your sketches we're going to go to the school we're going to show them to the uh to those teachers there and then see if basically to ask them if it's going to be something if i'm i have the skill i don't have the skill and they said like yeah welcome like let's let's go let's 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 bring a new guy because they didn't have a graffiti guy in the school before so oh, they okay. didn't kind of know <laughs> what i'm doing and <laughs> i just saw some crazy letters but they saw that i have a passion for it and then they were like yeah let's let's do it and i have to because it's in a different city so i had to drive every day by the by the bus there was a bus only six in the morning that i had to take every day and to go to the school and yeah so it was it was um also a hard thing because i like my parents didn't have no money to rent me a, a place that i could live when i to, to to go to the middle school in the different city so i have to drive every day and you know be and then you start your school at nine and then you finish at four and then the next bus is 6 p.m so you have to wait till oh, six to wow. go back so it is you know it was it was something but I loved it like I yeah and and then the idea was not to paint the idea was to become a graphic designer because I thought the graphic designer make a lot of money so I can like work and I you know I already and the graffiti thing I was not doing only the graffiti thing but I was always also um doing um I would say primitive graphic design so I I was a fan of uh, Dragon Ball and I used to oh, nice. um create my own like uh, desktop um, wallpapers and stuff like that uh. from the car- <laughs> like you have the, the, we already had like the first internet so you, you can download so images because but you yeah. know the internet was really bad so you created your own stuff so I kind of learned uh, the basic of graphic design like with paint and then the first versions of Photoshop or like Corel or like stuff like that I was doing really simple animations like really really bad stuff but like i liked those things i i was like i said i was by myself i could work on my computer i there was no one that could you know disturb my flow so i really enjoyed that so the first idea was to become a graphic designer so i can paint walls and be a graphic designer and um yeah and and it changed when i went to studies still like before studies still i didn't paint like i didn't do i I had to do canvases in my school, but besides my school, I didn't. I didn't paint. And and in my school, because I didn't have no money, I couldn't use acrylics. So I was buying um, 
in Poland you can buy um, pigments for paint for like exterior paint but it's but it's just the pigment so it's like the cheapest version of paint that you can get but it's not really paint it's a pigment so it's wet all the time so I was painting with this and so I and painting with pigments without the base it's just horrible but I like what can you do I, I all my money from my you know from because I was working when I was 16 already to get my money so all my money went to graffiti not yeah. to, you know, <laughs> to paint in the, in the middle school. So, yeah. Right. So once you went to um, the Academy at Lodes, um, I believe your focus was screen printing and illustration. So is that, had you shifted to that as like your career goal at that point? Um, yeah. And yeah, when, when I went to study, um, I realized that painting is not so bad. I finally could buy myself a proper um, equipment. I already was making a little bit of money and I could, you know, take care of myself a little bit better and just, yeah, just experiment. And, um, yeah, and then because I went to Academy to Lodge because um, my friend was there, um, a a graffiti friend, um, and we could paint in Lodge together. So that was the the city I made a decision for. And he was on those... um, on those like like he was doing screen print he was doing um uh, there was no illustration back there in in, in lodge so we, we did screen print graphic design and then you had a bunch of different um things that you had to do on the first um, year so when i learned more about the screen print i was really into into it i really liked the the idea i really liked the process i really liked the the outcome of it and yeah, and 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 of course, I met Signer when I was studying, and we started to paint together graffiti and started to do more stuff. And it kind of naturally grows into you when you like when you when you start. I like, like I said, I like to try different things. So I like to try things. If I like it, I try to you know see more and try to develop in that way. And if I don't like it, I just just leave it, you know. And that was with with like illustrations and and with painting and yeah, I was. It was a big shift from the graffiti because, like I said, and, and even when I was painting graffiti, I never painted characters because I thought like the characters are like that's that's not for me. Like I I thought that they're like you know the um, not for the proper graffiti guys. You know, it, I was raised as a like you know the proper graffiti guy that respects all the r- rules of graffiti, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So so and then it like then it shifted of course, but. It was, yeah, it was a big, a big, a big transition and super surprising for me because I never thought that I'm going to paint for my living. Yeah, it's amazing that that came later. Um, was it while you were at the academy that you started shifting your work in the streets from graffiti to like uh, sanctioned murals, like official, like legal murals? Or how did that shift happen? Um, no, I mean, yes and no. So, um, the legal um, graffiti uh, came a little bit later when, as a way of making money to buy spray cans. So I, okay. I, I, like I said, when I was working, I, I did some like legal w- jobs. So it's not a graffiti. It's not like it's just a commercial painting with spray cans. So I did that to gather money to be able to do to paint. And I was also going onto graffiti jams, uh, traveling trying to paint in different spots, not only in my hometown, but go outside. And it was the time of uh, Photoblog, um, so you could upload your images on internet and show your work to other people. And I started to you know, get some connections with other people, being invited for graffiti jams. And uh, one of them was um, a big graffiti jam in Bitgosh, where I met um, uh, where I met a guy that was uh, basically like a mental figure for me for the next five years. He wasn't a graffiti painter. Um, he was organizing events and he was organizing um, events for basically kids like me. So to take a graffiti guy and work with him on the different aspects and try to open him up. And um, yeah, and thanks to him, I started to do uh, bigger walls and and bigger productions, and to, um, start to get an idea of graffiti as a different thing, not only um, 
you know, letters, characters, and just my name, but like something more, something that you can show more, like, I don't know, illustri- um, um, emotion or um, your own ideas or on walls, not only your name. Yeah, that's amazing that, that he had that kind of impact on you um, to kind of re- kind of nudge you into, you know, evolve, I guess, your interest in graffiti into something even more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, he, he did a lot of good things for um, not only me, for but for the whole uh, Polish scene, because um, mm. I don't know if it's still there, but if you you can check Stumilo Velas, it's uh, in Polish, Stowarzyszenie Stumilo Velas, it's going to be hard for, for English people, but um, they, we did so many walls, we did so many different um, different projects together, and close to graffiti, like we work in an elderly um, uh, place with other people, and then create uh, an illustration for a mural with them, and our like we we did a lot of stuff, and yeah, and without him, there wouldn't be. I the Polish scene would be totally different. Like, like not only me or wow. Signer, because then when I met Signer on the studies, I, I took him with me, and I we introduced them, and we did projects together, and. Yeah, the the I think without him, the Polish did him. That's incredible. And so you mentioned Signer, and obviously the two you went on to to create Adam Crew. Well, actually, I think you I read that you had actually created Adam Crew even before meeting Signer, right? That yeah, it was yeah, kind the, of yeah, yeah, yeah. Your early neighborhood group that was uh, named exactly, that, right? exactly. That's the Adam Crew was created by me and my friend Mateusz Przygoński, Bolek. And yeah, we were just the friend that I that I told you. Like we we were oh, living okay. in the same building, and he was the guy that we painted together for the first time and yeah and then we joined a different crew but after like two years or something like that we decided to create our own crew and Mm -hmm. atom was created yeah that's amazing and so um i guess what do you feel the value at like at the time when you were you know you met signer you you joined up joined forces as this kind of partnership Mm -hmm. what did you feel the value of forming a partnership was rather than establishing like going out on your own and establishing your own individual identity and like growing that um with signer i was i was used to paint with someone always when like i said when i started i started with with bolek uh, we painted together and i was always um missing the um having someone with me it's always i think it's always easier when you have someone to paint with, that's that's why I moved to Lodge to be able to paint with a guy, you know, to 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 be able to work with someone. And with Signer, we when we met, we did when we met, we didn't know that um, I didn't know that he paints, and he, I didn't, and he didn't know that I paint. So the kind of maybe not friendship, but we kind of you know felt our own vibes, and we like, okay, that's a good guy. We can talk a little bit more, and then. From um, from one moment um, he saw that I paint, he saw I had a, a wall with um, donuts on my wall. Donuts are the those elements on on uh, on cans that you have the color on, so you can take this out. It's like a plastic round thing that it, it looked like a donut. So I had like all those colors on my wall because whenever I got a new spray, can I always took the donut out and I was put it on my wall. So. <laughs> Um, so I, I had a lot of them and he visited me and, um, and we started to work together and first we did was letters, like he did his own letters, I did my own letters. And in that time we still painted with a third friend of mine that we were painting together. Uh, but we saw with sign and we straight became immediately, we became friends. We started to hang out all the time and, um, the connection was so strong that that we we just felt um, like the connection that you can paint together and you don't have to like for me personally you don't have to care, care so much if you are so much visible at the on the final image but that that we work together as a partnership to for one goal it's not like it's me this part is mine and that's you signer that's your part like it's always been like with the graffiti you have your own letters and don't touch my stuff you know don't don't, don't cross right, over right. and with this one we were like okay we were like so um we 
sometimes we didn't even talk. We, we used to freestyle a lot when we paint in the beginning. We used to just, okay, this is like my part, this is your part, and we let's, let's just collaborate and see what's what's happening. And then in the middle, we used to, you know, um, try to mix it and blend it in, into one piece. And and it was something that came really natural. Uh, we didn't have we didn't have no like conversation. Okay, from this point we're gonna have to paint this or that. But uh, we just started to paint together, and it was so natural. Um, uh, like I said, it was going into one goal. There was the, 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 we had the same um, the same feeling that we want to create an image that it's something more than just two guys painting close to each other. You know? Yeah, yeah. No, that's a great way to put it. And I guess how do you feel that? Um, you and Signer's work complement each other. Like, are there things that you feel that he does better than you? And similarly, are there things that you feel you do better than him that bringing those together makes the two of you stronger? I don't think it was about who is doing better, what kind of stuff. It was more about um, letting uh, each other experiment in the areas that we want to okay. experiment. So when we when we used to work we always brainstorm first and we always ask uh, ourselves okay what do you want to paint like if you want to paint a character let's paint a character if you want to paint this you, you can paint this and so it was more about um we, we didn't we didn't look for our strong and and weak spots we just i was always certain that signer will do his job the best way he can and he can always um expect that from me also that i would try to do my best in my parts and if i would say signer is always better in um in planning because i'm um, i'm horrible okay <laughs> yeah it was it, it, i i don't think we ever thought about um uh, good and bad sides of, of ourselves we right just on. we just yeah Oh, that's awesome that you had that kind of relationship um, that felt so natural. I guess while working on these, you know, you're, you're focusing so much on graffiti and then that evolved into legal works. Um, mm -hmm. How did you start to develop your studio practice and like develop your your smaller paintings that, you know, doing them in a studio? Um, and I guess initially as as like... Or, or was that initially as a partnership with Signer, or were you doing paintings on your own also at the same time that you were doing these large walls? Um, so you have to paint in uh, art school and the academy. So more or less, I had to do it. Um, and like I said, I I discovered that um, oil painting it's totally different than uh, the pigments that I used to work with that you cannot really paint with them. And if you get a better uh, equipment that the final work it's better and i started to experiment with painting and i had to paint because of my school so it was also a natural thing that i started to do my stuff and i started to paint my stuff and um actually we got um after we painted some walls together already with signer and we did some big walls together and we were kind of um maybe not known but people saw that okay there is a crew uh, in Poland that paints like that. We got invited by our friend Naver to Krakow for our first show and for our, our first gallery show. And I think that was the first canvases I ever painted like for myself, I would say, mm. that, uh, for a show, for something outside school. Um, so yes, I was kind of... Um, I had to do it like I like we we got invited we already did like screen prints we did um you know so we did different types of prints um we did uh, like we did walls but I never um we never had a show and it was something that um yeah you, you just had to do it so so we 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 went signer was already doing because signer had a different background signer was okay. more about into art and this classical stuff I was the graffiti guy that had to you know, paint some some canvases, and I was already doing characters in that time. I was already doing walls, so I, I, I was in the in uh, in the middle of the transition. Let's say right, right. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so so yeah. while you were still going to school at at Lodes? Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, the 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 beginnings were, and yeah, I think it was, it was second or third year. So because. I before Signer already did big walls. Like when Signer came and we did 
some walls together. I already was working, like I said, in Bitgosh with a bunch of people that that were not creating graffiti anymore, let's say, but going in more into muralism. Nobody knew about muralism at that time. Everything was graffiti, just bigger or smaller graffiti, you know. So I was kind of already doing my stuff and um, bringing Signer into because I knew that he he's going to crush it. And, and I, I saw his works and I saw his sketches. I saw the, the background that he has and um, and how skilled he is already in that time. So, yeah. Awesome. And, and so once you graduated, I think you graduated in 2012, um, you guys had a show in Vienna. Um, I think it was called Mind Trip. Um, and then you had like a show in Rome in 2014, uh, bedtime mm-hmm. stories. So you, you started to graduate outside of Poland and getting a lot more mm-hmm. international recognition. Um, you, you obviously in 2015, um, had, I think what was your first U S show at think space. Um, yes. and then of course you've showed several times with them since. So how did you start getting that name recognition outside of Poland and, and getting all of these opportunities abroad? So after the Krakow show, um, we got invited. I mean, it was first, it was, everything was through connections, to be honest. <laughs> it's, it sounds like it sounds, but um, we've, our first, our friend got invited to Berlin to a gallery called Intoxicated Demons, and he showed our uh, works um, to the guy. The guy was interested, and first, I think, first he invited Signer, and then Signer took me, um, and we started to, and then, you know, couple other people joined us from Poland so we got a, like a group of six eight people that was showing works together we were traveling to Germany for small shows or like for big um, art fairs like um, there was a show oh I don't I'm really bad at, at names and dates so if I mix something I'm sorry uh, so I don't it, it was a, like a big art fair in, in, in Germany that we spoke I think it was spoke and that we used to go to and we were building connections there and we were knowing more and more people and in the same time we were already were doing walls and we one thing led to another so one wall when you do you to like you know post it on the internet somebody sees it you can invite it in a different place and you travel from one place to another and in that time um, it was still because we started with signer traveling when we were already studying so we kind of had to you know okay the school is one thing and our careers are the second thing we have to put a lot of pressure into those those maybe not even we didn't think about a career and a way of making money but um just we wanted to paint walls and we had the opportunities to travel to different countries and be able to do that so we took what we could to be able to go out and yeah and we and we started to get more and more recognized and like you said invited to different different shows because the galleries in that time they were popping in europe there were graf- uh, the gr- basically graffiti galleries so people that are connected or had some graffiti background they decided like open up gallery or go more into art business and because our, I think our generation grew up uh, on a graffiti. Even if you lived in Turek or you lived in New York, and at that time, graffiti was a big thing all over the world, I think. For me, I mean, I was focused on it. So for me, I saw graffiti everywhere. And um, so, and some of the people were like, you know, you, you knew them when you were starting and then you met them and they were like giving you some connections to somebody else or somebody it was it was just a, a mix of people and the world is of graffiti was quite small to be honest in that time we knew even if you don't know someone personally you knew his works or you knew someone that knows him you know it was it was a little bit different and in poland it was i think max 20 people painting like in the whole poland so you knew almost everyone you know i mean painting on a certain level because the graffiti there are a lot you know a lot of graffiti guys and you don't sure, know sure. All of them, but <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah and so that's how you made the connection with like andrew and, and the folks at think space ultimately yeah i think so i don't remember exactly how how andrew got in touch with us but i think it was in Hawaii that he uh, came oh, okay. to okay, like Pow Wow? To talk to. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, 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 yeah. I think okay. so. I think it was Pow Wow that we first um, talked. Yeah, I think so. But I, like I said, I'm really bad at <laughs> <For sure. dates. laughs> 
So <laughs> I remember that we went to a nice, nice small American restaurant. So it was somewhere yeah. in the U.S. That's what I remember. Nice. No, it's cool how it just naturally kind of developed organically over the years. Um, so I want to I want to shift gears a little bit and talk how, about your you know individual themes and the styles of of the work that you make, um, and you know. Not all, but a lot of the work that you do is has a central figure as its focus. More recently, I feel like you've maybe moved away from that a little bit. I see a lot more like flower vases, dogs, animals, but largely central figures are, are often a big part of your work. Like, mm-hmm. So it begs the question to me, who are these people? Are they part of a story that you're telling? Or are they maybe inspired by real people in your life? Um, are they retelling memories? Like, What is the story behind the people in your, in your works? Um, people are used as... Uh... The, in the same way as the vase and the animals are used, mm. kind of. They're just like a um, point, they're just an element in the overall story that I want to show. So, because when I paint, I try to tell some sort of story, even if I don't, because I don't like to tell the stories to the viewer. I like to, you know, everybody has his own ideas. Because when I, when we, when we traveled and we, we talked with people, everybody had a totally different view of <laughs> what he's seeing. So, um, so I want to tell a story. And yeah, yeah, there was a, there is a, a figure almost always, and it's almost always a woman. I don't paint a lot of guys. Um, I don't see it as a. I, I see it as an element. As I just see it as a part of of story that I want to show, and it's easier to tell a story with a human being because the viewer kind of reflects easier with when when there's a person painted. It's it's harder to show emotions in in a vase on the table than it's shown you know on a face. And but yeah. You know, you mentioned that you don't like to, to share the story because you like people to interpret their own meaning. Have you ever been surprised by what somebody thought a piece of yours yeah. meant? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, it's almost always I'm surprised. Um, some sometimes some like I got it with the last wall I did. I um, um, sometimes they are so accurate in the way that I'm thinking about the work that it's like okay. Am I too direct, or, or, <laughs> or are you getting <laughs> the idea? But yeah, it's it's cool to um, to listen to to those because I guess I like to connect my paintings with certain emotions and show certain emotions, or my, like my childhood memories, or um, something that I'm in right now. Like basically, all of them tell a story. I would say connected to my personal life. Or like maybe not, but they are not direct. Like, but when I when I see certain paintings, um, I see the time. I remember the time why I painted this painting, and what was behind the painting when I did it. And I had a, actually I had a cool conversation uh, when we did the the show in, in Think Space um, with Andrew, and there was a guy that he was I think a psychiatrist. And we talked about certain paintings of mine, and he was telling me which um, year, not, not uh, which part of the year was different painting main and why really? things. And he was like, he was nailing it, and he was oh, wow. like telling all those emotions. And then we had a really, really cool con- conversation about about the work. That's amazing. Yeah, one of one of the one of the coolest ones. No, that's incredible. And you mentioned like trying to create an emotion also, because that was one thing that I, I always, uh, that strikes me when I see your work is that it does evoke a certain sense of like nostalgia, but also like thoughtful and melancholy. Like there's a lot of emotions that I think that your work creates. And so it made me wonder, is it more about telling a story or is it more about creating an emotion or is it some like combination of those things? I think if I would put a percentage, I would say it's like seventy percent emotions and then thirty okay. percent story. But it's not like it's every painting is different, and I'm getting bored really, really fast. So I try to jump from one area to another. So if I like paint um, a, a canvas that has, I don't know, like a landscape or uh, or like a forest or something like that, the next painting is for sure not going to be a forest or like a landscape. It's going to be something totally different that I want to try out, like a portrait or like a still nature or something, because I don't want to repeat. I still, I think it's kind of maybe not repeti- repetitive, 
but you kind of see those points that kind of are close or the same. I think it's maybe maybe a part of style, maybe a part of um, having a um, close range of, of ideas. Because as a human, you, you I mean, as a human, you have your own um, your own, I would say, limits of what can you um, create and what can you think of. And I, when I create a painting, I think a lot of uh, the scene that I want to put it in, like the colors, uh, what kind of emotion I want to put, and what kind of the structure I like. I like to, I don't know, like if I paint a a tree and uh, in the nighttime I like to go in the forest and just look at it, not like photograph. I still use photo references, but I like to feel the moment that I'm trying to get. So if I, if I like, I don't know, I had a painting that, that there was a, there was a tree in the middle and the, my goal was to create um, like a silent moment of reflection, but with the second um, um, backstory in it. So I w used to go in the night to like a forest or a park and just oh, try wow. to get the vibe of it to be able to show it, you know? Do you feel like and that helped you do a better it, job? It, it, no, I think it's amazing because it, it gets you in that state of mind. So do you feel like that that helped you better tell or better create that atmosphere that you wanted? Yeah, I yeah, I need to I need to feel something to be able to show it. I cannot mm -hmm. um pretend that I'm you know, I know the feeling if I don't know the feeling. So um yeah, so yeah, I have to yeah, for me painting it's it's not only, you know, having an image and transfer it from a paper or from like your computer screen on a canvas, but um, recreate more the way that you want to, the way of, of fulfilling in, in a certain moment. I know it's it's okay. hard to explain, but it's yeah, it's it's for me it's boring to re re repaint an image. I when I sketch my paintings, I leave a lot of for freestyle, like a lot. I do small sketches. I I put uh, elements because I I do photo merges. I do like you know Photoshop stuff and stuff like that to be able to to, to work faster. But still, I I tend to change a lot during the process, okay. like a lot. Interesting. And so you you you, know, you mentioned um, getting bored easily and shifting um, because of that. Uh, one, you know, and I, I think I've also recognized you kind of explore different ideas. Um, you know, and those different types of explorations have changed over the years. One thing that I, I think stood out in 2017 in your your beautiful mistake show, um, it seemed like you were exploring light a lot, a lot of like. Mm -hmm. shadows and darker images and so it made me wonder like what is what was your fascination at that point in time with light and just shadows and and figures and how the light like affects the mood i still have to say i like dark paintings and i like the paintings that you don't have a lot of light in it i think it's they're more interesting i and I think it's a little bit connecting, connected with my eyesight because um, I don't like light a lot. So like in my house, uh, like everything is covered, like all my windows are covered because the lights kind of hurts my eyes, I would say. Mm. Um, so, so I like to paint um, the things that are not flashy. I like to have my kind of way of um of course and i really uh, there was a point that people told me like okay like you need to paint a little bit lighter because like right oh now, yeah when you when you go yeah like yeah yeah the last painting i did i i painted in my can i'm um, in my uh, studio and i took it out outside and then when you stand like four meters uh, away you just see like a black <laughs> it's, it's not, it's, so there is no light <laughs> in it but in the studio when you like reflect like when you put good light on it and you like it, it's really it's really nice dark night painting but uh but yeah but i like to i i like the the shadow i don't know i don't know why to be honest i always like the, the to paint it in that way i i never um Right now, maybe I'm more experiment with lighter colors, but I'm used to paint. I, I used to paint a lot of dark, dark in the meaning of color, and other in the meaning of, of emotion, or um, uh, you know, because that's a big difference. But 
I don't know. I I just I just I like the when when a person just stands in the shadow and you just see just small reflections and just like the small changes in light and those small aspects. Because it's very like, subtle. Because, yeah, 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 yeah. I like those subtle those subtle changes. I don't like the, those like strong, you know, colors and they make me. It's like I have the same with perfumes. It's when I go okay. to like a <laughs> perfume shop, my brain is just, it's just too much. It's the same <laughs> right. with, with colors. I like to have a subtle, calm, um, yeah, chart, color chart. And yeah. Nice, nice. Um, another um, thematic that I think is common in your work is your use of animals and particularly a white rat. I think that's something that we see a lot appear yeah. over the years, either perched on a, a figure's shoulder or just somewhere in the image. Um, and I'm curious if that holds some symbolic importance to you. Um, is that you know, representative of a feeling or an idea that you wanted to communicate? Yeah, it has a lot of actually. It's It's a like it's the second coolest element that you can put inside a painting because it depending on where it stands or with who is it's connected to it you can get totally different um opinions on it like for example we ha I had a wall uh with, in uh, Stuttgart and there was a vase and for and the first sketch uh there were rats on the vase dancing and there, there was idea behind it and blah blah, blah. but um for people of stuttgart it i couldn't paint rats because they were like horrible animal that you know that cannot be illustrated in the city and so like there is a one way for me when i add them a lot of times they're kind of as a friend or like a yeah i would say a friend there was a movie uh, I don't remember the name that every person has his own animal, like a not like Harry Potter, like, maybe like it's like a fantastic movie, something connected maybe to Harry Potter. But like I kind of and I like the idea of having an maybe not an emotional friend, but kind of like a figure, uh, hmm. like a spirit animal, I, I, like a spirit animal. Yeah, like dog owners, I would be would get it. Like I have a dog and he you know he's one of the best friends <laughs> you know yeah, i have him like sure. 13 years and he you know i have him a long, a long time so that kind of um connection when you have with that it's not a human being a different person but somebody that it's some something maybe more it, in certain paintings of course because like i said it's used to be able to build the different emotions in different paintings and in different paintings the rat is like um like a bad thought or something like that, depending mm. on how I want to use it. So it could be a good thing, it could be a bad thing, depending on 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 basically the idea of the painting. But it's always I always um, feel as it as a good um, like a spirit animal, like a good thing to have him close to you, you know, like to have him on your shoulders that he's always there. Like I don't know, like like yeah. like a companion and almost it, like a companion, and it's. And maybe it like it goes from the beginning when I was painting, I always painted with someone. Maybe that's something mm -hmm. I I didn't I didn't go so deep into it. Why I paint this element first? It was just an element of the composition as a cool thing, as a small element that you can put in a different spots on your composition to build up the, the the composition itself. And then it grew on me and it became more and more more important part of the canvas. And on some of the works, um, he is not there, but I think at 90%, even of those works when you have um, just like uh, the still nature or something, there's always, even if it's not, the, it's like a tale of him somewhere, or like that the, the presence is there. You know? He's yeah. just off camera. <laughs> exactly, exactly. He's not the, the most important element in the, in, the, in the work, but he is there and yeah. Yeah, that's awesome. Are, are there other symbols that you feel are, uh, that you use a lot or that, that are important to you that you use on a, on a regular basis? Not really. We used to, we used to with Signer, we used to paint a lot of symbolic stuff. We used to buy books with symbols and we used to go into it a lot in the beginning of our works. But then, like I said, we understood that you travel to different spots in, in the world and people have totally different ideas of the same symbols. And even if you have 
some of them are like connected or some of them are close to each other every person sees the world completely different i would say and every everybody sees the stuff in his own way and um and i left the rat for myself and i used to paint birds also like as an element as a small like the small composition element but the red kind of the and the, and the white one kind of i don't know it just kind of grew on me and i hated painting them i like and i when i <laughs> it's it's for me it's always it's they always for me they are not perfect all the time and then when because it's a small element and it's sometimes they're like super small on a canvas and yeah i i think i never learned to paint a proper rat in my life but <laughs> Uh, yeah, there's are, still more are, time. <laughs> still more time to perfect it. <laughs> yeah, yeah no, it's funny. It's funny because I, I mean, I enjoy painting them and I hate painting them at the same time. <laughs> it's a, it's a strange connection. <laughs> I love that. Um, you mentioned your process a little bit earlier, and I, I'm curious, like, how do you usually arrive at your ideas for new works? Do you have any kind of brainstorming activities that you do, or do you just have a yes. sketch routine, or how do you do that? No, I don't sketch at all. Um, I sketch if I have to. And the sketches are mostly, I mean, I do the doodles. It, you, you cannot call them as sketches because they're like, I have those, you know, sticky notes, the small ones, and I just make few lines. I write what I want to show in the, in the canvas. And then, and basically I have two ways of working. So, um, first, um, when I want to paint, um, certain element, so if I have an idea, okay, I want to paint um, a fallen tree. Let's use those trees in every aspect. Uh, a fallen tree. Uh, first, I look for a fallen tree. Of, or if I see, like, I don't know, I travel somewhere, I see a cool fallen tree, I photograph it. Um, and then I build a story around this element. So the first basic idea is to paint the tree and then build a story around it. And I, so... Or the second one, when I first have the idea in my mind of the feeling of or the story that I want to show, and then I build and add elements to get that story going. So depending on which is that, I start from um, um, photographs or I just um, walk around and think uh, about how to show a certain stuff. A certain element and I a lot, I walk a lot with my dog so the walks are a moment that I can think about it and then even when I do the first sketch it's just the sketch and from the small sketch to the big canvas there is a lot a long 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 process because even if I have an idea I like the idea I I gather the resources so I have photographs I did I don't know I found on the internet some good photos or I did my photos by myself I sketch it I um, and then the painting begins like that's the zero zero point and from that point everything can change from I did paintings that I had like 90% of a painting done and I just covered 80% of the canvas and I started all over again because I didn't oh, wow. like the idea. And so it's, it's like I said, I never repaint uh, sketches. I always create in a moment. Like, and I, I don't um, think that certain element is done until the canvas is done, the whole thing. So it's like... You like I right now I had a I talk about the forest because I right now I paint the forest, um, so I did all those trees. I came back the next week and then I covered everything. I started once oh. again <laughs> and then they were finished, and then I painted them and then I started to rework, rework, rework. I covered one of them. I repainted one, and it's all the, the process is just and it. it it takes time, you know, because you have to you know, mix the colors and everything. And then I mix all the colors. I need to have a perfect color for me. Perfect. I I don't I don't use a color palette. So I used uh, I pre mix my colors. So I use like a small plastic um, containers. 
So I first mix all the I mix the colors that I need. I cover it. I mix you know all the colors, connect them together, and I save the work together. If not, so the mixing process sometimes takes longer than the painting because. Oh wow! Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I, yeah, I'm crazy with the mixing colors. I, I can't spend whole day just just mixing colors. Because you want the colors to be exactly right. I it's guess. exactly the way I want them, and. Sometimes I think that I want them that way, and then it doesn't work. <laughs> you and change I, your and mind. I to, yeah, <laughs> change my mind. Yeah. <laughs> so mixing colors in my yeah, sometimes it takes like a, like for me, sometimes it's like six hours of just mixing colors, and that's wow. the studio time, and that's it for the day. And then you cover them, and you're like, okay, I like the colors. Next day, I you know start to paint. You know. Okay. Wow. So how far from your original sketch or your original idea? It, I mean, you mentioned that sometimes they're very different, but is it often that they're very different or do they usually kind of stay close to what the original idea was? Mm -hmm. Depends on the painting. Sometimes sometime the idea is, it's just like that, you know? You get the idea, you, the, the painting goes really easily and you don't have to change nothing. And this, the thing that you see in your mind, or the, the idea of what you wanted to do looks good when you, you know, transfer it to the canvas and sometimes it doesn't so there are no rules um everything like i said everything is open to to be changed and to be reworked and and the initial sketch is just a sketch and the initial even the initial idea of the initial feeling that i want to show of, of initial scene that i want to show can change also so from I don't know, like a person standing somewhere to a uh, totally different posture, different different pose, totally different face. I tend to change faces like few times in a painting. So if I start with a portrait, sometimes the portrait changes to a totally different, uh, yeah, totally different. Work. Right. And so with that, like that ability to change direction um, as you're creating the painting. Um, do you have that same approach when it comes to your large mural pieces? Because I feel like you'd have to have a little bit more like locked down before you start painting the wall. Or is it just as, as freeform? Um, it's not so much freeform. It's still, I still leave a gap for myself. Um, we used to freestyle a lot with Signer. We used okay. to, but we were together. So it was more doable. So uh there was moments that we like change all the colors on the whole composition or like change the portraits of the of the person or like change the body of or or even uh we had a in australia we had a moment that we had to completely change the the sketch uh but so we used to freestyle a lot now because of the workflow and you have only like two weeks or like two, right. I, yeah, like two weeks, it's like a normal amount of time for a mural to be made. So I um, I have to prepare, uh, be more prepared for the mural thing, but I still like to freestyle. I still like to add. I still like to not repaint, but just to, the sketches are more complex for the for the wall than for the, for, for a painting. That's for sure, because you have the weather, um, so and when you have two weeks and it rains for a few days, you're not going to get those base back. So you have to be juggling from, you know, what can you do in that short period of time and what you're able and what, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but it's still, I still, I still freestyle and I still don't repaint. I, I, um, I see myself in the last days that I just don't take any sketches, I just go on the wall and I just, you know, do what I, I just go down, I check what I want to exchange, what I want to finish off, etc. And I just do it. So I don't, like I said, I don't repaint. I don't re repaint. It's impressive just to be able to work at that size, um, mostly freestyle or at least um, on the spot, you know, when it comes to working in, you know other people's neighborhoods or different parts of the world do you have to do much research about that community or the wall that you're working on in I, order to, I, to... I never do i never do okay. <laughs> i never um i never connect my work to the to the place that i paint i like to i'm i'm bored with all those murals and sorry if you paint the mural like that <laughs> and um <laughs> that reflects the city i hate those like 
yeah, okay, we have an Eiffel Tower in the city. Let's paint an Eiffel Tower on the wall. That's like, why? Like, you can just go and see it by yourself. Let's just paint something totally different, something not connected to the city, but maybe connected to the people, but not like a certain group of people, but maybe everybody can take something for themselves. And um, yeah, the idea was always to show, um, basically the idea was to steal a little bit of time of you. So you go and check my work and then you stand there and think of what you're seeing. And I'm not going to tell you what you're seeing. You have to, you know, take your own time, you take your own idea. Uh, not think about the thing that you like you know thought about for the last five minutes but just focus and just see and try to discover what you're seeing by yourself that's the the basic idea in everything that we did with signer and, and without signer yeah i think that's such an interesting way to look at it because um it, to me that sounds like you're you're trying to inject a new experience into somebody's life because mm -hmm. if you're tying it to their community that's not a new experience they've experienced their community for their whole life but you're intentionally exactly. trying to create a new experience for somebody that mm -hmm. may not have that opportunity so that's really cool yeah and yeah the cool thing is that because you cannot paint for everyone there is you cannot you know there is no song that everybody likes there is no you know one work that everybody is the favorite one so you cannot focus I mean, I don't focus on who I'm targeting my murals. I just, you know, I think personally that this is a good idea for this wall. It's going to work, you know, in color as well. It's going to work in um, what I'm trying to show, what I'm trying to say well. And you just have to trust me that um, I'm good enough to <laughs> to tell you <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> what's good in that spot. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. So while you're working, um, um, how do you gauge that everything's going well? Do you have to get, I mean, do you do that while you're up closer? Do you have to come down off the lift, look at it from afar, come back? Like, how, what is that process like? Um, when we, and yeah, when we, so when we started with Sina, when we painted together as Atom, um, we used to just go and and sketch freely on the wall without any projectors, without any, um, like I now doodles and stuff like that, just on the wall because the style was a little bit different. So we, um, we painted only characters or only elements on the walls without touching the background. We try not to touch the background if we didn't have to, so because we liked that. We, we were painting mostly in Lodge or in Poland where the walls are, you know, dirty. They have their own kind of feeling that have their own way of looking. They are not just flat, repainted, nice walls that sometimes there are just no gray When you see our first works, you can see that there are kind of like a stickers on the wall. And so, um, so we used um, natural elements from the wall to be able to guide us. So if you had like a, I don't know, like a spot of dirt somewhere on the wall, you'd be like, okay, I'm here. So I know that I have to do this and this on that part. But that took a lot of time. So we used to take like around two days just for the sketch. And right now when I work by myself, I don't have time so i just do those do and i and now i do mostly uh, paintings with backgrounds um because it looks better after years those first works uh, when we painted when you wanted to cover something you have to mix the color of the wall so oh, we did right. that but but most often the color of the wall is already a color of a faded paint that was put years before. So when your paint fades, and it was in the perfect color in that moment, but when it fades in a few years, you get like a white spot or like, right. you know, lighter spot. So after years, those works didn't work. Like I, you know, I would go and just outline them and just repaint the background just for flat or something. So I, we, I saw that, okay, let's do those backgrounds. Let's just touch up the backgrounds. So be able to have the full image through the years, not only for the next like four years. And then it, you know, starts to change. Um, so now right now I do doodles. Um, if I have to, if I really don't have time, I use the projector, but I feel it's kind of annoying a little bit. I rather do those doodles. Um, but I don't hate on any, it's just, it's just a sketch. It's not, 
a finished work from this the sketch is just the beginning if you if you can transfer it on the wall that's cool you can use your own way of doing it but then that's the beginning of the work then you have to cover everything and make it you know work together mix those colors and, and do all the all, all, all the magic so the, the sketching part right now for me it's not so important and the, when we when we painted as atom there was a moment when we sketched everything perfectly and we were like ah we should just leave it as a sketch it works you know, perfectly <laughs> uh, as a sketch so <laughs> yeah so it was different now now i'm getting older i have to you know respect more my time and my back is just in a horrible shape and i have to be thinking about myself also i can be as crazy as i was when i was like 20 something you know? Right. <laughs> and so, um, you know, you mentioned mixing paints and, and I know that you don't use spray paint anymore. Obviously, when you were doing graffiti yeah. back in the old days, you were doing spray paint. Mm -hmm. Now you, I think you're using, is it acrylic or like house yeah, paint? What acrylic. types of paints do you use? And, and do you just not like spray paint as a medium? Or? No, no, no. <laughs> no. Um, I started with spray cans, of course. So it was obvious that I'm going to paint more and more walls with spray cans. But on some point... Um, the spray cans, it's not efficient enough, I would say. Mm. So first of all, first of all, you have already mixed colors. You cannot mix your, I mean, you can mix. We used to mix when you have, uh, make a one can low pressure and the second one high pressure. So you one you put in ice, the second one you keep on blah, blah, blah. But there are already mixed colors. So you cannot really mix them by yourself as I like to do. Um, the second thing is that um, I cover a lot more space with a roller than I will cover with the spray can. When the wall is rough, it's easier to cover it with acrylic because it's not sinks in so much as a spray can. So there's a lot of uh. technical aspects. And then it's unhealthy because you inject all the f f yeah, fumes. So... Um, there was a moment when we when we were in the middle of the transition, we were using spray cans and acrylics because we first used just the uh, spray cans. Then we were like, okay, let's put acrylics on the big surface, small stuff with spray cans. And then there was a moment that we ordered spray cans and acrylics and it didn't even touch the spray cans. And at some point we were like, why we still order them? Like we just we <laughs> not gonna need them. We are able to do it by ourselves with, with acrylics. And you know, when you travel a lot, in different countries, you have different brands of spray cans. Somebody has, you know, different Montanas, different different stuff. So, and and the spray can shops are not sometimes are not in the same city. So you are out of a spray can. You have to wait, you know, for a, for a day or something. And sometimes a day it's a lot for you if you right. need a spray. You need a color. And basically, acrylic paint you can buy almost everywhere, and it's easy 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 access. And the funny thing is that when we started, we did, we we used to buy white, black, uh, red, yellow, and blue, and we mixed all the colors by ourselves. Now I'm getting wow. lazy, and I'm ordering <laughs> a, a color close to the thing that I'm still mixing. I I I think I never used a pre-mixed color on my wall. I always, even if it's pre-mixed, I always mix it by myself on the wall because it's it's totally different on your screen. It's totally different in the paint shop when you have. Uh, different light and it's totally different in the shadow it's totally different in the light so there are a lot of aspects that you have to consider when you want to get a certain color like i'm like i said i'm i don't know if it's visible or not on the works but i, I treat the color really like serious and it's super important for me like it's super important so i think that's incredible i, I love that yes yeah, so it's so i i make my decision uh on like from what time of a day the sun hits the wall like if it's like from 10 oh, till wow. 4 so it's it's gonna have a different colors the colors like if it's in the shadow we have to make the colors stronger because all the colors tend to go you know darker and and yeah so it's you have to make all those the, the decision on on the side so you have to be able to mix the color by yourself as you want it to no, I think that, I mean, personally, just, you know, me speaking, I, I think it really shows the, the dedication that you have to color, I think really shows through in your work. I think that that, that adds um, so much because uh, it gives you, uh, I mean, I think it's noticeable. And that's one aspect of your work that's noticeable is, is your 
your consistent use of like your mastery of color, I think, uh, is, is clear. So that's cool. And it's also makes sense that that's why you may not want to use spray, like one of the reasons why you may not want to use spray mm-hmm. paint, because it doesn't give you that level of infinite flexibility, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, so when it comes to like traveling, um, you know, what's a good, I guess, mix for you throughout the course of a year between doing large mural pieces and doing studio work at home. How much do you like to be traveling throughout the year versus staying at home and working? For now, for now, four walls is a max. Okay. And I think perfect is around three walls. So because when you travel, basically it takes a whole month from your life. Even if you paint 14 days, even if it's only two weeks, you always have to prepare your sketches. You have to prepare yourself. You have to travel, paint, go back, blah, blah, take... I have always, after my travels, I always have to take a few days of recovery because my body suffers. And because when you paint only for a few, few walls in a year, you are not, your body is not used to it. So you kind of jump in into different mode of, of working for like 10, 8 hours a day, depending of, of the weather and of the sun. Um, so for me right now, it's like three, four walls a year. It's enough. And then all the rest is the studio time and I, different projects that I work on and a normal life. And it used to be a lot more. We used to jump from one country to another and from one wow. wall to another. And on some point, it's like I said, first of all, I'm getting older and I, I don't feel comfortable traveling so much. And then I think the work... Um, Sometimes it's better to have more time to think about what you're trying to do than just do, 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 and go into, you know, how, how many stuff I did not, how good the, the, the thing was that I did. So, yeah, so, so it's, it's a lot, a lot less than it, than it was before. Three walls, it's four walls, perfect. Between those two, is there one that you enjoy personally more? Do you like working in the studio more? Do you like working outside in the walls more? Is there one that you um, like? I think both of them have their own um, pluses and, and bad sides. Um, studio work would be better if I wouldn't have the studio that I have right now, because right now I'm into changing my studios. I'm Like I said, I'm building a studio for myself, so I have a like, really bad studio. And I hate to stay there, and I and I, I have hate every minute that I have to be in. The, I mean, not the painting part, but just like being in this in this in this environment. Right. Um, but the studio gives you like a lot of more time. You don't have the weather aspect that is really important. Um, like I said, you can freestyle more. Um, nobody sees it. Like that's the big uh, also a factor because when you are outside on the wall, you're getting judged all the time. Like whatever you do, you, somebody sees. It. If you if you do uh, a mistake, everybody will see the mistake and until you will not change it. And everybody makes mistakes. It's not like you know those right. painters that you see. Everybody makes mistakes. Everybody is unhappy with with some elements, etc. So it's easier, and in in the in the traveling aspect, the cool part is the traveling moment. I mean, the new meeting new people, making those connections, meeting artists that you are like fan of. That's the best moment, I think. Like meeting someone that you you know follow and you're like you know fun of or like new when you were like younger and now you're kind of not in the same level but you're kind of you know you know you're leveled enough to be able to talk with them and don't be like oh you know <laughs> so um that's a, that's a cool that's a cool thing um you know the bad part of murals is the weather um and um sometimes you know with traveling so much and with working with different people sometimes you know the people that organize those walls um are not so professional or don't organize it the way you want it to be Mm -hmm. and and people on instagram on facebook just see the final result and they don't see you know the things that happen backstage and so that's a big factor when you travel and you have to basically trust uh, the people because you know them mostly by emails only and then you just go there and they're like, okay, that's that's your wall, you know, do your best and, and you're like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, 
So that's a big. So yeah. So the the, the studio works is 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 easier, but. I need, I like to travel. I still like, when I'm up there on the wall, when I, everything is well organized, uh, you have your paint, you have, I have my headphones on because I always listen to music. Without the music, I can't paint on the wall. I have, the funny thing is, is that um, I'm afraid of heights. So oh, wow. I need the music to focus. I need my music to focus because if without it, I, I be, I'm afraid to, <laughs> to paint. Yeah. Um, yeah, because you've done some pretty big walls. That's a, yeah, that's so the horrible experience. <laughs> 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 and yeah, I did I did some tall tall buildings, and yeah, 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 yeah. And and I live on third floor, and I was always afraid to go on the balcony when I was a kid. So painting a, a wall, it's yeah, it's, it's something huge. Different. Yeah. So let's talk about what you have coming up. What, what's been your main focus lately, and what does twenty twenty four look like for you? Um, for now, I do mostly uh, commission paintings, so I do mostly um, studio work. Um, like I said, I do three walls per year if I can. If, um, and I, I'm in a point right now where I like not having a plan. I, I just have a baby a month ago, so I don't want to plan I used to have a plan for the whole year. I used to work like, okay, in the first two months of the year, you were always booked till the December, all till the next year. And it put a lot of pressure on you when you have all those stuff lined up. And then like, I you know th- there are a lot of things that happened the last two years. Like I had like some health issues. I was through divorce. I was through different stuff. So I understood that you can't plan your whole life yet you know you can't you have to be flexible you have to take your time i'm i'm more happy to take more time for my family right now not be you know jumping from one city uh, one country to another being always out and and um missing all you know birthdays or you know christmas parties and stuff like that and and just just working all the time and so so right now i'm doing mostly commissions um and and traveling if i if i can i don't i don't plan any shows on purpose for now i want to like i said i want to f- focus on the baby i want to focus on on those commission works and yeah I, I do my own prints i have a small company here i do my own stuff so it's yeah it's it's a nice it's a nice place right now to be in and 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 live in a small city. It's amazing. And the, the the cool thing of the small city is that you don't feel so much pressure than when you work or live in a big big city and you feel and you see the rat race every day and and it's totally totally different. You know, it's yeah yeah. That's amazing. Well, I mean, congratulations uh, in general. I mean, it sounds. Uh, I mean, it's amazing. You, you're you're taking on a, a whole new responsibility of being a yeah. father, and um, yeah. that in and of itself will um, no doubt uh, create a lot of experiences for you, but also drain a lot of your energy, probably. <laughs> I mean, for now, it's not so bad. For now, it's no? like everybody no? okay. was. It's just the first month, so. Right. And with my partner, we have a kind of good schedule. What we a good plan, and and we we can, I mean, I can work. She has a you know, she's a mother, so almost. I mean, I don't want to say all the responsibility because I do a lot of stuff. But you know, it's a different part when you're a mother and when you're a father. You know, it's different different things that you have to do. But yeah, no, no, now now it's it's. It's and it's. I don't know if it's an age thing or became uh, becoming a father thing, but you um, you change uh, the way you think about what's important and what's not important, and what what are the things you want to focus on, and you know because when you're younger, yeah, like you think the career it's the most important part, and then maybe not the career. I when I was like 13, I always wanted to have my name to be known in the graffiti world but everyone you know but not my name atom crew name that was the important part so the right. crew would be <laughs> would be you know the most important and the most known crew of the graffiti in the, in the world and you know i don't care anymore <laughs> you know if it's, i mean yeah no, no, now no. now what's important is is being there for your new baby you know being a yeah, father yeah, 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 and yeah. You know, yeah. building a family around that so it, I, I love that you recognize that and are you making space for that in your life so that's awesome yeah, yeah. 
any so you mentioned prints uh that you have a print company any prints that you want to put on people's radar um uh events or anything um, that you got coming up i think i think uh, i don't know where it's gonna when it's gonna be the podcast when it's gonna be uh first uh, of january actually new year uh, ah so we are a bit already be after the print sale so we're gonna have a new print coming up i think next week okay um, awesome yeah, yeah 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 after that i mean because of uh, the cool thing is uh that i because of having my own um print um printer i have a friend that helps me with printing stuff and uh, with the sales and everything um i can i can say it's 100 percent mine it's not like i just send a file to someone that he prints something i can check all the colors i can check if I like the, the 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 print by myself, I can do a lot of tests. I can you know play with it a little bit. So it's it's totally different, and it also gives me an opportunity to put a print every like three or four. I I didn't do it in the, uh, this year. Yeah, there was no print this year because I like I said I had a different stuff personally that I had to handle before I will be able to kind of go back and 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 you know do all that stuff that I wanted to do. Yeah. Awesome. Well, where can people find you online so they can stay up to date with uh, what you got coming up next? They can check my web. I, I'm on Instagram, of course. Um, I have my own website. I think it's gonna tomorrow. It's gonna be yeah. Tomorrow we're gonna upload the new uh, new pictures on the website. We're gonna update the website, change the shop, and everything. So so from tomorrow. Um, but yeah, I'm mostly on Instagram. If you wanna contact me, the best way is through Instagram because. Um, I don't, we have Facebook with signer, but face, yeah, fa- but it's Facebook. I, I think, <laughs> uh, let me say, so we had with signer, we had an email, uh, I, but I don't know if I, I should tell that because it's super unprofessional, but we have an email, we had an email, um, back in the days, uh, of Atom crew and we never checked it and <laughs> we checked it years after because we, we we totally forgot about it and we had like thousands of <laughs> invitations <laughs> and messages Oops. <laughs> and it just, okay, yeah. <laughs> so yeah so if if yeah so yeah, that was that was us back in the days yeah not not thinking about anything just being able to paint that's amazing so your new website uh, or the new version of your website and then instagram uh is where the best places to reach you yeah at. basically but yeah that's that's the best places if you awesome can, if you want to check uh, check check the work so last question and this is something that i like to ask everybody uh who is one artist that you'd like to see me have on the show oh hmm <laughs> hmm I, the, the first guy I thought was Andrew Hamm. I don't know if you already had him on the show or not. No, not yet. I no. think not. As I checked, not. Um, I mean, I love his. I just love his works. And if if somebody asks me about like a, one of the favorite paintings, it's always him. Nice. So and he's a really nice guy and a, and a cool person to talk. So yeah, I think maybe him. Very cool. He, other artists have suggested him. I feel like he's like one of those artists' artists, like the, the artist that all the other yeah, artists like. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly. He's one of the one of my like top ten nice. artists that I and and I know him. I I had a chance to meet him, and he's such a lovely person in a personal life. So yeah, I think he would be a good good person to talk. Amazing. Mateusz, thank you so much for coming on the show, man. This has been really great. I I really appreciate it. Thank you. (laughs) I hope it was okay. (laughs) So that's it for this episode of Art Affairs. I hope you enjoyed my conversation with Mateusz. I found it super interesting the way that he works in the studio. This tendency towards getting bored with an image and, you know, not wanting to create something twice has led him to be super spontaneous with the painting part of his workflow, giving his ideas room to evolve in the moment and listening to his intuition as it develops. And so it would seem to me at the end of that, it truly reflects his state of mind at that moment in time. I wonder if that's why he can look at older works and know exactly what was going on with them at that point because of how, you know, connected to his psyche his work is. I also found it fascinating what he said about not trying to make his mural works uh, connect to the city or the community that they're in. 
I've always heard artists say the opposite of that, that they try to make a piece connect to the history or to the culture of that community. So to hear him say it was important for him to go the other way made me really reflect on that. Thinking of a new mural as an opportunity to create something that can provide that community a completely new experience, something they've never encountered before. That was such an interesting perspective, and I can totally see how his and Signer's work do that. It was refreshing to hear him reflect on how, you know, his life goals and priorities have changed in the wake of becoming a new father. When you have that kind of significant life change, it can really force you to, you know, reevaluate a lot, especially in this case where it's an entirely new human being that, you know, you want to provide a good life for and build a meaningful relationship with. I do hope that, you know, with these commission pieces that he's working on, that you know, he at least shares some of them online. It's always a treat to see, you know, new work from him. Be sure to follow him on Instagram to keep an eye out for that and to learn about new print releases that he'll have throughout the year. So thanks again to Matiush for joining me today and thank you for checking out the show. I'm truly grateful for your support. And just a reminder, one big way you could help out if you're really enjoying the show would be to check out the show's Patreon. You can find all the details on patreon.com slash artifairs. And as always, you can contact me through my website at artaffairspodcast.com or on Instagram at artaffairspodcast. So until next time, be good to yourself and be good to each other.